This is a scientific miracle. There are countless possibilities for what might exist beyond our comprehension. The expanse of space, in contrast to how gravity and other physical principles operate on our small planet, is full of mystery and unpredictability. There are many cosmic anomalies such as cosmic rays, dark energy and the quirks of our own solar system. There are some occurrences that are so bizarre that an explanation involving extraterrestrial life and other living forms seems to be the only option. What did we receive from this old satellite? Is this major finding connected to extraterrestrial life? Join us as we explore this old satellite that sent us a signal revealing a big discovery in space. There are tens of thousands of active and dormant satellites orbiting the Earth at any given time. Some satellites are destroyed upon re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere, while others may stay in orbit for years after they are no longer required. People commonly overlook these satellites because they are typically still in orbit due to operational issues that prohibit them from being commanded remotely. These roaming spacecraft are known as zombie satellites, yet not all of them are utterly lost because sometimes a connection can be made after they are found. Let's briefly travel to the time of the Cold War. During the Cold War, the United States military was modernizing and timely, reliable intelligence from all around the world was crucial. America had left Korea at the time and had relocated to Vietnam. Nearly anywhere in the world was reachable by the US military in a matter of hours. But once there, a major issue was the lack of reliable long-distance communications. Communication was required between the many military branches operating in the air, on land and at sea. Command and control communications are needed to facilitate COTM, communications on the move, with vehicles, airplanes and ships. There was no one tactical communication system that could satisfy such objectives in the early to mid-1960s. International military communication was a driving force behind the development of today's communications satellites. The Tactical Satellite Communication TSCP program's launch serves as the story's opening act. The TSCP restated its goal of tactical satellite communications for every location on Earth at the beginning of 1965. The US Air Force began a project to provide low-rate digital communications for airborne personnel using UHF satellite frequencies. The Air Force project management team created and carried out the experiment to test UHF satellite communications in collaboration with the Aerospace Corporation. Studies on the effects of radio frequency interference were conducted at the MIT Lincoln Lab. They were looking for a fix that would work in the forest and inclement weather. The experimental satellite that would shortly be launched by a Titan 3C rocket was created as a result of adjustments made to the original concept by Lincoln Lab, which already held an Air Force contract. The teletype used for communication was a readily available commercial model. Tiny solid-state receivers and one 000 watt output airborne transmitters. They also developed sensitive technology and specific antennas that could be put on satellites in order to detect and report interference. As a result, the Lincoln experiment with satellite number 5, often known as LESS-5, was developed. The spacecraft was moved to Cape Kennedy, Florida in June 1967, where it was supposed to launch with five other satellites. Only on July 1, 1967, did the Titan 3C rocket launch into orbit. Following the completion of all tests, which revealed 100 words per minute teletype, voice and facsimile communications, the satellite was made available to institutions for research and testing. After that, the military shifted to the bigger, more powerful LES-6 satellite. The only battery in the LES-5 satellite was programmed to shut off after five years of operation, fulfilling its entire purpose. It appeared to be the only broken component on the satellite. On March 4, 2020, LES-5, a long-forgotten satellite, which had been in orbit for 53 years and 49 years after it was scheduled to be switched off, was discovered to be still emitting a beacon signal. Finding these errant and abandoned satellites has become a hobby for a small number of people, and Scott Tilley, a Canadian amateur radio operator, has even helped NASA contact a few of them, including the lost NASA probe in 2005. Tilly shared the members of these clubs' passion for discovering the oldest satellites. He discovered the nuclear-powered Transit 5B5 US Navy navigation satellite, which was launched in 1965. He was thinking about the much older target satellite, the LES-5. Tilly has dedicated his entire professional life to finding the elusive LES-5 satellite, 
It took him hours of online research before he discovered the radio frequency the satellite utilized to function. He then began the challenging process of building a structure to support a sizable antenna that would detect the frequency. On March 24th, when he picked up radio measurements of the LESS-5 as it orbited the Earth, Tilly finally received compensation for his efforts. He was, however, in for a shock as he persisted in studying the antiquated satellite. Not only was the LESS-5 still in the atmosphere of the planet, but it also appeared that its radio had not shut off as planned in 1972 and had continued to function with the aid of the solar panels that were still attached to it. There is a very good likelihood that the LESS-5 satellite will be contacted once more after all these years. The satellite was created by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology's Lincoln Laboratory, which has not responded to the hoopla around this discovery. Many believe this to be evidence that LESS-5 was used for top-secret military programs, given that the lab was known to have worked with the US military on a number of projects. This suggests that the zombie satellite may still be keeping some information hidden despite being radio quiet for years. On the other hand, the blueberries on Mars that had a wet past continue to perplex scientists. A geological wonder was discovered by NASA's Opportunity rover on Mars in 2004, only a few months after it had landed there. Tiny, iron-rich spheres that were dispersed across the rock's surface. These items were given the name blueberries by snack-loving mission scientists, but the characteristics were harder to describe than to comprehend. Their recipe is still somewhat of a mystery. Studying spherical formations that resemble these blueberries on Earth has always been important in trying to understand the origin of these blueberries. A novel theory of the chemistry that may have gone into creating these Martian blueberries is offered by a recent study, which draws inspiration from their terrestrial analogues. This study thus contributes to the understanding of what ancient Mars may have looked like. Beyond their amusing moniker, the blueberries are intriguing because they provided some of the earliest proof that Mars was once highly wet. And if scientists can determine precisely how the blueberries developed, it may help us comprehend what Mars was like at the time the features evolved and what kind of life would have hypothetically flourished in those conditions, according to Horgan. As a result, the team behind the current study visited Utah and Mongolia on Earth in search of rock formations that resemble Martian blueberries. These structures differ from those on Mars, which are around 10 times smaller than their earthly counterparts. The formations on our planet are also less structured than those on Mars. They are all combined into one blob. They come in various sizes. Nonetheless, despite the shortcomings of the comparison, scientists still use Utah and Mongolia as examples because they are considerably more accessible than Mars. The structures appear to have been constructed around calcite mineral cores, with iron-rich material merely making up the exterior shell, according to the researchers. The scientists hypothesized that floods of iron-rich, mildly acidic water swept over the initial calcite structures in light of their field observations and chemical models. Martian blueberries lack the calcite heart of their terrestrial counterparts, appearing to be entirely formed of hematite. Yet, the researchers suggested that might indicate a protracted episode of overwash that consumed all the calcite. There are more significant repercussions than the niggling intricacies of chemical processes that may or may not have occurred on early Mars. First off, the scientific community's interest in all the water that percolated through rocks to create blueberries makes these facts important. The second possible implication would be related to a vexing question concerning Mars. What became of its once thick atmosphere? According to the authors of the new study, the carbonate ions trapped in the calcite predecessors to the blueberries may have been influenced by this atmosphere. It, however, would not resolve the atmospheric puzzle. Because of how tiny the Martian blueberries are, more advanced equipment than those found on Earth is required to fully unravel their mystery. The current work serves as a reminder of the enormous periods and the possible complexity such timescales entail involved in Mars geology, regardless of the specifics of blueberry chemistry. The minerals that we see can be greatly influenced by time. We must exercise caution. What are your thoughts on these recent discoveries?